Today on Kraken's Garage, we're going to talk about Harley Davidson's 2021 virtual release. Let's get to it. I'm your host, Eric. Welcome to Kraken's Garage. We're going to talk about virtual release for Harley Davidson's 2021 models. I'll put a link down below if you want to sign up for it. Uh, so you could, uh, for a first time in the history of the company, they're doing a global release of their new models. Normally they come out in August. Right now it's set up for January 19th. They also have a release set up for the Pan America, which I will link down below as well, separately, uh, featuring Jason Momoa hosting that one. Due to the pandemic, they postponed the 2021 model launch till January 19th. Why I'm excited about this is you get to hear from the engineers the product development guys and the style team about the direction Harley Davidson is going. With the new CEO, they rebranded the uh, direction of how Harley Davidson is going moving forward. Rewired is what they called it. And I think that ties into the wired electric bike. I, I don't know that for sure. There's another virtual launch on February 22nd for the Pan America with Jason Momoa. There's much better YouTubers that do the uh, model releases and, and dive down into the details. I'll link a couple of them down below. Matt Laidlaw is one of the ones I really enjoy. He's out in LA and works at a dealership, uh, one of the uh, owners, I believe. He does an incredible job. I'll link a, a post to his video. I'm gonna have some snips of his clip in this video that I'll be showing up here on the screen. Now to be clear, Harley Davidson dealerships are already getting 2021s on the showroom. So anything I'm showing you or anyone else showing right now you can actually go buy today in your harley dealership right now so be sure to check that out if you're in the market for a new bike it appears that harley davidson went back to a cable and clutch and dropped the hydraulic clutch in 2021 on their bread and butter bikes so there's a bit of an uproar in the uh, uh forums about that uh personally i don't have any harleys with a hydraulic clutch but i have ridden them if I was given a choice, yeah, I'd prefer the hydraulic clutch. So I don't know if that's, there's all kinds of speculation if they're uh, lowering the price uh, by uh, taking some of the equipment off of the bike or whatnot, I don't know. Or maybe they have an engineering discussion going on saying, you know, the, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze, so why add more money to the bike? I don't know. So hopefully they'll shed some light on that on the virtual model launch. Let's talk about the Sportsters for 2021. The Iron 1200 returns, graphics are the same, about a $100 price bump on it. The Iron 883, same graphics, got a significant price increase of $600. This is US dollars, high eights, 88, 8900 in that range, $600 brings it up to 9500. Ad freight, you're at 10 large for the 883. I don't get that at all. I don't understand the direction. So we'll see how that does. And the 48 returns as well. As I predicted and why I bought my Roadster, they dropped the Roadster after. That's kind of what pushed my hand uh, on why I bought my bike when I did. Uh, again, it's a bastard bike, so it just doesn't do very well. Just like, yeah, XR didn't do very well. In this case, the Roadster didn't do very well either. And I kind of got a whiff of that when I saw the parts supplying to cafe it out through Harley drying up quickly. They dropped the specials. The specials uh, referring to the street, street Glide Special, Rogue Glide Special, Rogue King Special, they've been tight-lipped about it. I don't know if they dropped them, but there's a lot of uh, incestuous models where when you have so many different variants of a Rogue King or a Street Glide, it gets kind of um, redundant in my opinion. Maybe they're honing it down to just uh, a couple of models this year. Wouldn't be a bad idea in my opinion. The Street Glide standards and Rogue Guide standards will return. And of course, like most of the models, RD, RS is available at $995. I strongly disagree with what Harley Davidson is doing regarding their pricing structure. ABS is a bump, freight is a bump, RD, RS is a bump. And you know, when you, your expectations are, say 18, 19 grand for a bike, and you go in and look at it, and it's a couple grand more just for these items, it, it gets, uh, to be where you're pricing yourself right out of the market. Why Harley just doesn't include ABS and make a standard on all the bikes, I don't know. In my particular case on the Roadster, I chose not to go with ABS because their systems, 
I don't know about the 2021s, but the prior systems, if you have to blade the brakes and you get an air bubble in the brake system, blading your brakes, doing your servicing, you have to take it to a dealer and they hook it up to their machine to flush the system to get the air bubble out. I mean, it funnels you right to the dealer, so you're gonna be out another $100 bill for the glory of it all, just flushing your brakes. Fat Bob returns, Electro Glide standard returns, Slim and Heritage return, plus the Heritage S. Discontinued, deluxe, no news flash there. It's kind of old news now. The low rider has been dropped, but they're still maintaining probably their number one selling bike last year, which was the uh, low rider S. So that's an interesting bike, how it evolved and started out in life on the Dyna chassis. Then when they dropped the Dyna chassis, all the Dyna bros were upset about that and converted the low rider S to a soft tail. And now, lo and behold, it's their number one seller. Very few changes to that bike. Uh, they still have the basic black, and then they have a uh, kind of dark red, almost a root beer color. Uh, I'll throw a picture up if you want to get a peek at it. Harley discontinued selling Sportsters in 2021. Is the new Sportster going to be powered by the liquid-cooled Revolution Max motor. That's my best guess, and, and again, I don't want to be an early adopter of a brand new powertrain and why I wanted an Evo. Same motor, the Pan America, which is 1,250 cc's, and the alleged Bronx, which was scratched, it may return, we'll see, had a, uh, I want to say a 975 cc for the Bronx. I expect the 975 cc to go right into a Sportster chassis and that be the next Sportster lineup so that Harley and get active again in the UK. Last published for the new Revolution Max Motor, 1250cc variant, which is scheduled for the Pan America, is predicted to be 145 horsepower. And for the predicted Bronx or whatever they put that motor in, possibly the Sportster is my prediction, is supposed to be 115 horsepower. Pretty respectable considering what the horsepower is on my roads. I think they're targeting right after the Indian Scout with that setup, and I think it would be a smart move for them to put that kind of horsepower motor into a Sportster to go head to head with the Indian Scout, because Indian has proved that you can sell a water-cooled V-twin. That kind of sums it up on where we're at and where we're going with Harley-Davidson. I don't know, have all the details or pieces of the puzzle, but we'll find out here very shortly in eight days. I'll get this video posted up tonight. If you're interested in getting a new Harley, now's a good time to pick up one of the bikes. They have some new colors coming out and some exciting stuff coming up. So I'm looking forward to the launch. I can't wait to hear the direction they're trying to go. It's kind of a mystery with the new CEO. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more in the future, hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. And remember folks, go riding is good for you. <laughs>